Hello everybody, today we're gonna to take a look at a video of a Saab JS39 at an air show uh, that Saab put out like a couple years ago. And you guys have sent this to me a bunch of times, so you've probably already seen this video, but we'll just take a look at it, uh, make a few observations. As always, if you wanna watch the full video, it'll, the link will be in the description. Uh, I'm gonna stop and talk about stuff as we go. All right, so the video is called uh, Grippin' and G-Force. So, sounds like it's gonna be fun. And spacebar play. Good mark. Spacebar, mouse play. Okay, so starting out, uh, we've got G's on the right. Um, a little uh, external view, internal view. Uh, looks like there's his little helmet cam. Looks like it's an old contour room. He's got the mirrors on, so that's gonna obviously affect his frame rate. Um, let's see here. All this is blurred. It looks like a really nice uh, cockpit, so to speak. Uh, all color, uh, large MFDs. Uh, looks like a moving map there, probably a weapons display system right there. And um, yeah, center stick set up. Got the big canopy bow, uh, but that's because it's a hinge canopy opening off to the side. So this is their Gen 4.5 fighter. I think it's got an ESA radar Erst. Uh, Delta wing design with the canard. So uh, high maneuverability, not a lot of thrust. I think it was something like 18 or 19,000 pounds of thrust. So not like F-16 territory, which is pushing about 30,000 pounds. But because of the Delta wing and the canards, you should have uh, a high... Uh, G onset, a lot of alpha available, maybe not being able to sustain it for a really long time. The thing to note, they don't put the airspeed, and I think that's for security. I'm pretty sure that's for security reasons because, you know, everybody that gets in these EM M diagrams, it's really a simple calculation. Your, your turn rate is a function of G and airspeed. So the lower the airspeed and the higher the G, the better your turn rate is. So, and the smaller your radius is. So that's probably why they're not showing that. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the Gripen and the G-Forces. How will this work? Play. And he's on takeoff roll. This is a clean jet. He's got the smoke on the wingtips there. Not doing any kind of low transition or anything like that. Little aileron roll. And into the G's. Looks like he's just setting himself up for the next thing. Three G's, not too bad. Do a little G warm up, sort of. Although typically we do a level, but this might be how the air show guys get ready. We're gonna have uh, Rain Waters on the channel here soon, so we'll get to talk to him about doing these demo profiles. All right, so coming for the high speed pass. G's are going to build up because he's got more speed. Uh, negative 1G. That sucks. He's hanging in the straps. Again, negative 1G. It's just uncomfortable. Oh, boy. Nine. Down to seven. So right here, it's probably one of the most dangerous things you can do. And kudos to him for being able to do it. In fact, uh, the mishap uh, with Cajun, the Thunderbird uh, that was killed during practice, they attributed it part to this. Uh, it's the push-pull effect. So when you pull G's, your body gets a tolerance, right? So blood vessels uh, start to constrict. You're, you're trying to keep all the blood from pooling in your feet. Well, when you do negative G's, the process is reversed, right? Because all the blood's going to your your brain. So you're, you're, uh, you start to dilate and, you know, because now you don't want it pooling up. So it's, it's reversed in the direction. So when you push-pull and go from negative G where your body's getting used to being at, at, uh, having the blood try to go rush to your, your face and you start to pull G's. Now this guy went to nine. You've got a higher risk of G lock G induced loss of consciousness because your body's, your body's already prepped for negative G. And then you suddenly go to positive G. That's a huge, I mean, that's a 10 G swap, right? Because you went from nine to negative one. So really tough on the body, really tough to stay awake. I don't know what G suit these guys are wearing. I don't know if it's the a tags or F CAGs, uh, which is the new full coverage uh, anti-G suit, or if it's the older uh, one like I, I fly with and I used to fly with. But very impressive either way. I mean, G 
just to be able to do that. Now you see, he didn't hold nine Gs for a really long time. Uh, he went down to seven. Probably part of the profile, but could be, hey, you know, a little bit of light loss or whatever. But uh, still, I mean, that's that's pretty tough to do. So he's holding seven Gs, which still is not, I mean, that still sucks. There he goes back to nine. So it's just like an ease and then a tighten. So maybe he had a little bit of light loss. It was like, okay, I'm back on it. Or maybe that's just, you know, for the profile to, to make the turn happen. But what's impressive to me is how long this thing is holding nine Gs. I mean, it's obviously we're at low altitude. I don't know what the field elevation is, but still. And then we go nine Gs in the vertical uh, over the top. So this thing's got a lot of maneuverability. And despite, you know, maybe not having the thrust that an F-16 has, it's still able to hold its own. And there he goes again, negative G into five Gs. That's tough. I mean, that is hard to do. This this dude is definitely in some really good shape. I think it's a dude. It didn't sound like a chick. So seven Gs right there, down to five. He's really, really working here. I mean, even five, once you've pulled nine Gs, I mean, now you're starting to get tired. You can hear his breathing. You don't hear him G-straining all that much. He's just breathing. So it must just be, you know, with the anti-G straining maneuver, it's a, it's a three-second air exchange. Um, and you tighten your core, your glutes, your quads, stuff like that. It's like another high speed. They love their aileron rolls. Holy crap. There we go into nine. Oh boy. Nice thing about going nine over the top is, you know, if you do lose consciousness, it's not as deadly, but there you went back to negative one. So a lot of push pull on this very tough on your body. I mean, very fatiguing, very tiring. And here you see slow speed, high AOA. Uh, those canards are working. Just a uh, really maneuverable aircraft. Is this going to be a slow speed pass? Yeah, it looks like a slow speed, high alpha pass. So he, he's punching off probably a gear warning, low speed gear warning horn. That's high AOA warning. Because the airplane thinks if you're low to the ground, you're slow, you should have your landing gear down. There you go. There's the high alpha pass. And I would expect that. I would expect the Delta Wing with the Canards to be a very maneuverable, high angle of attack aircraft. And I actually expect it to be a little bit more than that. It doesn't look like it's all that high. At least compared to like what the Hornet demo does. But there he's in burner. Let's see how quickly he gets back his airspeed. It'd be nice to see the airspeed, to see just kind of how quickly it gets its energy back. Because he's just, I mean, he's got his left hand parked there in, in full afterburner. Negative three. Oh, oh, that's red out territory right there. Oh, and then the nine Gs. Oh, no. God, that's terrible. I mean... Good flying, but, oh, I can't even imagine. Again, you're pushing all the blood up and then you're reversing the direction. You can hear him. He's, oh, that's just rough. This dude's going to sleep like a baby tonight. Just hope he doesn't sleep during the show, which he wasn't because obviously this video has been pre-recorded. but dang. Another high-speed pass. And nine G's. Oh. oh, that hurts. There's his G strain. You hear him that time. That <laughs> Sounds like there's a beeper. Gives him the uh, the limit of max perform in the jet. Really maneuverable aircraft. Oh, dude, look at that. That's impressive. High alpha, slow speed, it'd be a good jank. I mean, that would be fairly effective in some kind of dogfight. So we're back to slow speed. And he's got the gear. Holy crap, he went. So he slowed the jet down to get into the right base for a gear down full stop. Or is he going to touch and go? 
Nope, that's it. He's going to full stop. That is amazing. Lands like a hornet. Not much of a flare. It's got beefy gear, though. These things are made to land on, like, streets. Really cool. It's a good-looking airplane, too. All right, so what'd you think? I thought it was pretty awesome, actually. Um, you know, we talk about the physiological stuff, the push-pull. I mean, that's a tough profile. I'd have to... We're going to have Rain Waters on the channel uh, Monday uh, for a live interview. I'm going to ask him about this, because to me, I, as a fighter guy that just does tactical stuff, I don't ever pull negative Gs or push negative Gs. Zero is about as far as you go, because usually bombs and stores, uh, you can't. And why would you want to? It's just uncomfortable. Nobody wants to do it. So uh, even in BFM, it's very rare that you actually go negative. Now, you'll punch the MPCD or something like in a Hornet, but uh, you don't go negative G. You don't get fully unloaded. So uh, that's not something we do a lot, but it shows how maneuverable this aircraft is. I mean, it would be good for a jank. I mean, out of plane like that would be pretty cool. But uh, highly maneuverable aircraft, good looking plane. Uh, I think only a couple countries actually fly it, but um, really, it'd be fun to fly. It'd be a fun little jet to fly. Uh, and even, you know, despite the lower thrust, I mean, it's still fairly high, but lower than like an F-16, it's still... Uh, able to hold and sustain 9Gs. Now, I don't know what the weight was. You know, if they've put a combat loadout with missiles and stuff, is it still going to be able to do that? I don't know. But, I mean, neither is an F-16. I mean, F-16, you know, with missiles can do it, but not with tanks and pylons and all that stuff. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.